Shalom, shalom. Welcome back. Welcome back. Happy Sabbath to everybody. Hallelujah. Amen. Ready to get back into the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to the book of Exodus. Chapter 23. Beginning at verse 1. All the way down to verse 33. Exodus chapter 23. You got your scriptures? All right. Let's begin. Verse 1. Do not bring a false report. Do not put your hand with the wrong to be a malicious witness. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. We're in the book of Exodus chapter 23, putting the scriptures in context. The scriptures are written to the 12 tribes of Israel, the chosen people of the Most High, Yahweh, and Yahweh Shai, Jesus, <laughs> the Savior of Israel. You got to keep the scriptures in context. The Old Testament and New Testament are in sync. They're in agreement. There's no contradiction. What's said in the Old Testament is said in the New Testament. They're in agreement. Moses wrote the first five books of the scriptures called the Law, the Torah. Moses is a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Levi. Okay, the Most High has delivered his people out of the land of Egypt, out of the hand of Pharaoh. <laughs> and he's brought us through the Red Sea on dry land. And now we're in the wilderness. And the Most High is speaking unto his people, the chosen people of the scriptures, the, tw the 12 tribes of Israel. And we're gathered before him at Mount Sinai. And he's given us his laws, statutes, and commandments. And he's using Moses. He was speaking to us uh, personally. And they're like, oh, we don't want you to speak to us personally. <laughs> so he's giving the word to Moses and for Moses to give to the rest of the 12 tribes of Israel. So we're continuing with what he's saying to his people. He said, do not bring a false report. Don't lie. Anything that you say can and will be used against you in the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> Do not bring a false report. Thou shalt not lie. Do not put your hand with the wrong to be a malicious witness, an evil witness. Don't agree. You know somebody is wrong. They're telling a lie. Whatever they're doing is not right. Do not put your hand to be a... a, a to the wrong to be a malicious witness, an evil witness to agree with that person. Whatever they're doing is, is evil, is, is against Yahweh, against the word of Yahweh. Even the word of, of, of another person that's uh, being afflicted by what they're saying and they're lying. Don't agree with people that are, are, are telling false reports. Verse 2. Do not follow a crowd to do evil nor bear witness in a strife so as to turn aside after many to turn aside what is right. So a lot of what Yahweh is saying to us, it makes sense and it seems simplistic, but he had to say it anyway for us to hear it and, and receive it and believe it and then do it. That's how the scriptures are. You can't just say you, you, you hear it or see it or believe it, you have to also do what it says. Faith without works is dead. You can't just say, I believe, and that's it. No, you got to, if you say you believe, you got to show that you believe by your actions, by your faith, by your works. Faith without works is dead. You can't just say you believe. And so the scripture has to be written, and it has to be obeyed. He said, do not follow a crowd to do evil. Don't always want to run with the crowd, be in the in crowd. The scripture says, wide is the gate, broad is the gate, and, nar and narrow is the way to lead to life. But broad is the gate, broad is the way, <laughs> and wide is the gate that lead to destruction. Don't go on that broad way. A lot of people want to go the broad way. And all religions, every last one of them, are the broad way. If you're part of a religion, you're part of the broad way. And that's what people don't understand. The scriptures are not about a religion at all. 
It's only about a people. And so people want to say it's about a religion. Most high is the most high of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're a people. And then it's about their seed, the chosen people. That's what the scriptures are about. It's a history book. It's not a religious book. These laws, statutes, and commandments are instructions for, for the chosen people. But everybody else in the whole wide world has taken the scriptures out of context because of all these different religions. Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Catholicism, all these religions. Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, Seventh-day Adventist, Mormonism, Jehovah Witness. The Most High don't have anything to do with any religion. He's only coming back for a people. He sent his son, Yahweh Shai, Jesus, to pay for the sins of his chosen people. That's why he came. That's why he died and gave his life and shed his blood on the cross, hung on a tree, and was buried and rose again on the third day. And that's why he's coming back. For the 12 tribes of Israel, it's not about a religion. <laughs> he said, do not follow the crowd to do evil. All these religions, they're doing evil. They're, they, they're 501c3 corporations. They're incorporated with the state. They get their authority from the state. So they're doing evil. Do not follow a crowd to do evil. That's why the scripture says, come out of her, my people nor bear witness in a strife so as to turn aside after many. That's why a lot of us, the 12 tribes of Israel, are deceived because we're caught up in these religions. <laughs> and all these religions are full of strife. Nor bear witness in a strife so as to turn aside after many. Yahweh Shai, Jesus said, many will come in my name and deceive many. That's what's happening. Everybody that's going after religions are deceived. Yahweh Shai, Jesus didn't come to start a religion. He didn't come to start Christianity. He came to save his people from their sin. That's not a religion. He didn't come to make Christians. He said all those that was following him, Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, they are his disciples. They're his followers. Christianity is a, is a man-made construct. <laughs> The scripture mentions Christian three times, but it's in a negative connotation. Uh, Christian is a, a, a form of persecution. It wasn't meant to, for us to be embracing it and going around saying, I'm a Christian. It was a, a, they was using it as a, something to be ashamed of, they, uh, pointing at us like, oh, those Christians. Like they call us those N-words and all those other names. <laughs> That's, it's a ter term of persecution. It's, it was not a term of endurement, and it became a religion, and we don't know any better through ignorance. And so we accept all these things. But the Most High said, come out of her, my people. Come out of all these religions. Straight is the gate, narrow is the way to lead to life. And so a lot of us are waking up to the truth. All of the 12 tribes of Israel are waking up to the truth. And when we wake up to the truth of who we are, I'm going to tell you, and some of you are experiencing this right now, it's a journey in the wilderness because most of the time, everybody else not going to understand you. They, you're going to be by yourself. But you're not alone. <laughs> the Most High is with you. And so it, that's what Yahweh Shai Jesus said. This is how it's going to be. Everybody, you're going to be hated of all people for my name's sake. So when you wake up to the truth of who you are in the scriptures, you're the chosen people. Now don't get me wrong. Yes, we are the chosen people, but we still have to obey the scriptures and do what it says. We don't get into the kingdom of heaven just by being the chosen people. Our names have been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. But we have to believe the scriptures. Yahweh Shai Jesus said, if you don't believe that I am he, that I'm the Messiah, the Savior of, of Israel, you're going to die in your sin. So we have to believe and obey what the scripture says to do. And then we have to endure until the end. Don't just say, okay, I believe and that's it. No, you got to believe and do what the scripture says. Yahweh Shai Jesus is coming back. The scripture says he's going to reward every man 
according to his works. You got to be busy. You got to do something. So when you come into the knowledge of this truth, you're going to be hated. And you're going to be uh, out an outcast because people are going to look at you like you're crazy. What do you mean you're a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham? <laughs> Uh, you ain't no Christian. No, no, I'm not a Christian anymore. Yahweh Shai, Jesus didn't come to start a religion. So people are going to attack you. Now, I'm not an Islam. I'm not Muslim anymore. I'm not Hindu anymore. I'm not Buddhist anymore. I'm not Catholic. I'm not Judaism. All these religions come out of her, my people. And he says to turn aside what is right. What is right is to obey the scriptures. The scriptures are history to the 12 tribes of Israel. It's not written to everybody else in the whole wide world. Everybody else in the whole wide world take the scriptures out of context. The people over in the land called the nation of Israel <laughs> go by Jewish. They're not the chosen people. And see, that's what people get confused. They're like, what? Well, isn't the Jew Jews the people of God in Israel? No, they're not. Those people over there are Ashkenazed. Kazarians, Japheth Gentiles, the Edomites. <laughs> They've taken over that land by fraud and deceit. And everybody in the whole world uh, look at them as they're the chosen people. Since 1948, they became a nation state. But they go by Jewish. If you would ask them, are you the biblical Hebrew Israelites in the scripture? They would say, no, we're not. And they know that they're not. <laughs> They practice a Judean religion. Anybody can practice a religion. That's what people are doing every day, practicing a religion. But the Most High don't have anything to do with any religion. Yahweh, Yahweh Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob doesn't have anything to do with any religion. Yahweh Shai, Jesus, the Savior of Israel, doesn't have anything to do with any religion. And so those people are not the chosen people. The scripture said they are of the synagogue of Satan. That they say that they're Jews, but they do lie. All of the 12 tribes of Israel are scattered. All of us. And it's two kingdoms. It was divided into two kingdoms when Solomon sinned. Ten tribes to the north, two tribes to the south. The south southern kingdom was Judah and Benjamin referred to as Jew. The northern kingdom was referred to as Israel or Ephraim, or, or Ephraim. So all 12 tribes of Israel are not Jews. That's another uh, thing that people get wrong <laughs> out of ignorance. They want to classify all 12 tribes of Israel as Jews. All 12 tribes of Israel are not Jews. Only the southern kingdom with Judah and Benjamin were called Jews. The 10 tribes of the northern kingdom were were never referred to as Jews. They were referred to as Israel or Ephraim. And then when they sinned, the Most High scattered them among the, the Japheth Gentiles. He said in Hosea 8 and 8, you're going to be among the Gentiles as a vessel of no pleasure unto me. And so he scattered them. So most of the ten tribes of the northern kingdom were no longer referred to as Israel. They were referred to as Gentiles or Greeks or Samaritans, or Canaanites, or Romans, or Ephesians, or Corinthians, or Galatians, wherever they were scattered. That's why when the Apostle Paul make reference to Jews and Gentiles, or Jews and Greeks, he's making reference to the two kingdoms of Israel. But people don't understand that, and they tell me I'm lying, I'm a false prophet, they call me anything and everything, <laughs> but a child of the Most High Yahweh. But... That's the truth. I'm going to keep speaking it anyway. It's two kingdoms. And the, you how, that's stated in the scripture. And we're going to be two kingdoms until he returns back. Even though we're scattered in the land of our captivity, we're still two separate kingdoms. And so you have to understand that in the scripture. And so everything that's happening in the earth is relevant. What we see here, what we're reading right now, is still relevant today. <laughs> That's what you got to learn to make the connection. It's in the scriptures. It was written to us while we were in the wilderness. But we're still in the wilderness. Especially now we're coming out of, uh, we're coming into the knowledge of the truth of who we are. And so when we come into the knowledge of the truth of who we are, we're entering into a wilderness because no, we're going to be by ourselves. Because most people are going to look at us like we're crazy. <laughs> 
And that's what they think of us. But that's what, it's okay. And so the scripture already said only one third of us are going to be saved. Two thirds of us not going to make it in. Yahweh Shah, Jesus already made reference to that. They asked him, will many be saved? He said, no. Few there be that enter in at the gate. <laughs> Straight is the way and narrow is the gate and few there be that go in thereat. And so a lot of us not going to believe because the, we don't humble ourselves like a little child. He said, except you humble yourself as a little child, you shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. And so what the Most High is saying to his people, then he's saying to us now the same thing. We still have to obey the scriptures and do what he's saying to do. And once we come into the knowledge that we're the chosen people, we're entering into a wilderness experience. And we're going to be this way until the Most High comes back. He, Yahweh Shai, Jesus said that there will be some standing here which will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud. And so he's, he's preparing us. And so the same way he was preparing us when we were in the wilderness, when he brought us out of Egypt and we're in the wilderness, he had to prepare us to receive his word to bring us into the promised land. And so now when we're coming into the knowledge of the truth that we're the chosen people, we're still in the land of our captivity. <laughs> we're not leaving the land of our captivity until he comes back. But he's waking us up while we're in our captivity to understand who we are. And so he wants us to be ready and prepared to go into the promised land, the, the kingdom of heaven, when he returns. And so that's what's going on. Verse 3, and do not favor a poor man in his strife. So if somebody is poor, but what they're saying or what they're doing is wrong, don't favor them. They, they still wrong. Wrong would never be right. And that's what people, they try to make wrong right and right wrong. <laughs> but wrong would never be right. If you tell a lie, you can never mix the lie with the truth. Anytime you mix the lie with the truth, it's still a lie. <laughs> a truth and a lie can never be mixed. The truth stands alone. A lie lingers on. You got to keep adding to it. <laughs> Verse 4. When you meet your enemy's ox or his donkey going, going astray, you shall certainly return it to him. So the Most High is just laying out law, statutes, and commandments for us to keep. Now, it may not seem relevant. He's talking about ox and donkey, but it's still relevant. It's about stuff, people's possession. Don't if you see your neighbor and, and something is going wrong and he need help, certainly return it to him. Whatever you see, you see something about your neighbor that, hey, that's, that belongs to my neighbor. <laughs> return it to him. That's all he's saying. Help. Because he's talking to, for, and about the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, he said enemy. And sometimes we're enemies with one another. But... Sometimes in the land of our captivity, we're sort of joining, and so we're in the land of our enemies. And so even though we're in the land of our enemies, we're still joining here. If we see something wrong, we have to make a correction. We represent the Most High. Even though we're in the land of our captivity, we represent the Most High, Yahweh. We don't represent ourselves. Everything that we say and do, we're held accountable. We're held at a higher standard. Because we're his people. And he, he's teaching us how we should act <laughs> in this lifetime with everybody so that we can get along with everybody. We're in the land of our captivity. We're not ruling anything. We're in our captivity because we disobeyed the scriptures. All 12 tribes of Israel are in their captivity because they disobeyed the scriptures. We didn't obey Yahweh. We didn't obey his word his law, statutes, and commandments. He said, if you don't, I'm going to scatter you. If you don't obey my words, my law, statutes, and commandments, I'm going to scatter you. That's what he did. This is where, why we're here where we're at right now. <laughs> and so even though we're in our captivity, we still have to obey the scriptures. We still have to obey the word. 
I know it's never been told to you that you're the chosen people and me telling it to you sounds strange and weird and like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> but that's the fact. That's who we are. We're the people. If you if you was brought into a country and a land in, 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 into captivity through slavery, the transatlantic slave trade, nine times out of ten, you're part of the tribe of Judah. Of the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. And the rest of the ten tribes are already scattered. And they're, they're waking up, but a lot of them already know that they're Israel. Some of them don't know. <laughs> but the Most High is waking up all his people. These are the last days. The scriptures are written only to the chosen people. It's not written to everybody else. Everybody else reading the scriptures... You should understand that the scriptures are only written to the chosen people. And for you to have any type of covering, you need to acknowledge that. Who the Most High is, who Yahweh Shai, Jesus is, and who his chosen people are. Because you're going to either be a servant or you're going to be destroyed. Take your pick. <laughs> Verse 5. When you see the donkey of him who hates you lying under its burden... You shall refrain from leaving it to him, and you shall certainly help him. That means don't be holding any grudges against people. Somebody may have done you wrong. They hate you. They treated you bad. They did something against you to, you know, cause you harm, or frustration, or, or whatever. To, to, they don't like you. They hate you. <laughs> but if you see they having issues that... They, their donkey is, is, is burdening them down. They, they need help. Whatever their issue is, they need help. You shall refrain from leaving him. Don't just leave him laying there. You should certainly help him. That's why Yahweh Shai Jesus gave the reference to the, the good Samaritan. And people don't understand why they say good Samaritan. Samaritan represents people of the ten tribe of the northern kingdom. That's what that illustrates. Also the woman at the well and also all the other people that the Most High was dealing with that wasn't of the tribe of Judah. People think, okay, it's about everybody else now. No, it's not. <laughs> and so when he was talking about the Good Samaritan, he was still talking about Israel. He said a priest, which is a Levite passed by, and then he used the word Levi, a Levite passed by. And, and the person was injured, and they just looked at it. And then he said, a good Samaritan. And the good Samaritan are people that are of the ten tribes of the northern kingdom. The Samaria were, was, was the place where they were located before they were scattered. So a lot of them still dwelt in the land of Samaria. So they called them Samaritans. And so he said, the good Samar the Samaritan came by and helped the guy. He had been beaten up by robbers, and he took care of him, put him on his donkey, took him to an inn, fed him, told the man at the end, whatever happens, whatever you need, I'll repay when I come through. Now, this person that the Samaritan helped wasn't his enemy, but Yahweh Shai, Jesus said, love your enemy. <laughs> Turn the other cheek. You know, whatever your enemy do to you, Pray for him. Pray for your enemy that you will heap coals of fire on their head. And so it doesn't matter what someone has done to you. Yeah, you don't like it. Yeah, you mad at them. You, but you can't hold a grudge. You can't hold it against them. The Most High, Yahweh Shai, Jesus said, you got to forgive. If you don't forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you. See, all the scriptures tie in together. Old Testament and New Testament. You got to keep the scriptures in context. So that's what happened. People take the scriptures out of context. That's why you have all these different religions. But when you keep the scriptures in context, all the scriptures are in agreement. Verse 6. Do not turn aside the right ruling of your poor in his strife. And so people are going to say things. They're going to do things. But the Most High has given us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in all things. And so just because somebody is poor and they're in their strife, don't turn aside your right ruling. If they're wrong, they're wrong. Say, say they're wrong. Stand up for what's right. When you stand up for what's right, sometimes you're going to be by yourself. 
You're going to be standing up for what's right, and everybody's going to be looking at you like you're crazy. It doesn't matter. Stand up for what's right. Some people just afraid to stand up. But tell the truth. People say the truth hurt. <laughs> I don't know. what. Maybe it do, but you still got to tell the truth. <laughs> they call it the ugly truth. <laughs> A beautiful lie and the ugly truth. You got to tell the truth. Don't don't sugarcoat it. Tell it exactly how a T-I is. Is. <laughs> Verse 7. Keep yourself far from a false matter. And do not kill the innocent and the righteous. For I do not declare the wrong right. So the Most High is still speaking to his people. And he's telling us to do not. Keep you, he said, keep ourselves from a false matter. Anybody that's lying or doing something that's not truthful, don't don't participate in what they're doing and what they're saying. Don't be in company with those type of people. And there's a lot of people going around saying a lot of crazy stuff. Only thing we need to be concerned about is what the word of Yahweh says and make sure that we're doing it. Don't be participating in, in false matters. Do not kill the innocent and the righteous. People that are innocent and righteous don't don't say, oh, they deserve to die. You know that they're innocent. Stand up against the wrong. For I do not declare the wrong right. Anybody that's wrong won't be declared as right. And so if, if whatever they're doing is wrong, you need to speak up and say, hey, that's not right. <laughs> They might be mad at you for saying that, but hey, you got to stand up for what's right. That's what the word teaches. Then and now. And so this is what we have to do as the chosen people of Yahweh. Verse 8. And do not take a bribe, for a bribe bland a bribe blinds the eyes, blind the seeing, the seeing one, and twist the words of the righteous. And so people have been bribing. <laughs> Forever. And they still doing it. But the Most High is telling us, don't take bribes. Because when people give you a bribe, they're trying to cover up a lie. That's what a bribe is for. It's trying to prevent the truth from coming out. Something right. So they're trying to say, okay, well, here, here's some money. And this is how to make it. No, a bribe can never make anything right. A bribe blinds the eyes. The, the blends the seeing one and twist the words of the righteous. So if you accept the bribe, you're just as guilty as the person giving the bribe. <laughs> so don't do, don't have anything to do with bribes. Don't accept them and don't be part of, partaking of bribes. Don't don't try to bribe someone. Verse nine, and do not oppress a sojourner, as you yourselves know that. Know the sojourner of a, a ser, know you, as you yourself know, the heart of a sojourner because you were sojourners in the land of Mizraim. And so the Most High is admonishing us. When we were in Egypt, we were sojourners. That wasn't our land. We was just there. <laughs> we're traveling through. That's not our home. And so he said we were sojourners. He said, you know, you that in your heart because you was a sojourner in Mizraim. So don't oppress a sojourner. When we was in Mizraim, that wasn't our home. And so we were oppressed when we were there. And so now we're in the land of our captivity and we are oppressed. So if we see someone else that's oppressed <laughs> like us, like there is somebody, maybe our enemies are oppressed. Even if they are, then we're not to treat them the way they treat us. Yahweh shot. Yahweh, God of Israel, Abraham, and Jacob said, Vengeance is mine. I will repay. So don't try to get vengeance for yourself. So that's where we mess up sometimes when we try to take vengeance into our own hands. He said, Don't no, don't do that. Don't oppress or sword joiner. Don't, don't oppress somebody that's already beat down and trodden down. Because we already, we still beat down and trot down. But we brought it on ourselves because we disobeyed the scriptures. But nevertheless, we still the chosen people of the Most High. He has not forsaken us. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. He sent his word to follow us. Even now, his word is following us, leading us, and guiding us. 
Verse 10. And for six years you are to sow your land and shall gather its increase. So the Most High is telling us what we're supposed to do when we're blessed. <laughs> when he blesses us. Because everything that we have, own, and possess comes from him. He said for six years you're to sow your land and shall gather its increase. And so he's going to ensure that we have whatever we need. But he's making a proclamation here. He's saying, sow your land. So evidently, we're going to have some land. Even if we don't have it now, we're going to have it. When we make it into the promised land. And see, that's what I mean. Even though right now, we probably don't have any land because we're in the wilderness during this time. But he's talking about when you get to the promised land, six years you're going to sow your land and you should gather your increase. He's going to continue what he's saying here. But he's saying it for a reason and for a purpose because you're going to have some land. And the same thing is going to happen when Yahweh Shah comes back. We're in the land, in, in the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of, of, of Yahweh Shah on earth. He's going to establish his kingdom on earth. And we're going to have some more land. That's what you have to understand. And that's what people don't understand. They, they think, okay, Yahweh Shai, Jesus came, and so all the laws, statutes, and commandments gone out the window. We don't have to. Yes, you do. Because we're going to still be keeping them when he comes back. So if you think they're gone out the window or was nailed to the cross, you're mistaken. <laughs> you still have to obey the scriptures. And so when we get to the promised land, because that's where he's going to bring us, the land that he promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You're going to sow in your land for six years. And then you're going to gather in its increase. Verse 11. But the seventh year you are to let it rest and shall leave it. And the poor of the people shall eat. And what they leave, the beasts of the field eat. Do the same with your vineyard and your olive yard. And so the Most High is letting us know, look, <laughs> this is... Is what's going to happen. When you get to the promised land on the seventh year, you're going to let your land rest. And so whatever you gather in during that sixth year, you're going to hold on to it. And it's going to be enough for, to keep you for that seventh year. The seventh year, you're going to let the land rest. And it's for the poor. So the poor can eat off of it. You ain't gotta, You don't charge them. Just let them eat whatever they want. And it's for the beasts of the field. And he said the same thing for your vineyard and your olive yard. And so he's letting them know, look, when you get to the promised land, I'm going to be blessing you. I'm going to make sure you have what you need. And you're going to have to worry about a thing. <laughs> and so he's encouraging them. In the same way it is now, we're in the land of our captivity. Some of us are blessed. So even though we're in the land of our captivity, he's watching over us and keeping us. We may not be land owners in the sense that we got crops in the, in, in the land. But still, when we get to the kingdom of heaven, that's going to be the thing. Because we wasn't supposed to be going to the store and buying stuff and all this stuff, food and we're supposed to grow our own food. That's what he intended for us to do. But the way things are right now, you, most people don't have land and, and, and they don't have, so you're not letting your land rest. But what he's saying is that six years, he's going to bless you. And in the seventh year, you're going to have rest. And so what, what this, this is like a prophecy for us right now. And so we're the most high, we're coming to the end of the six years. I mean, six thousand years. <laughs> we're getting it, getting ready to go into the seven thousand year in the return of the Most High Yahweh Shai. And so that's going to be the the time of our rest. We're laboring now, but when the when Yahweh Shai returns, oh, it's going to be all good. Our labor, we won't have to labor. We'll be at rest. And that's why he said we're going to reign and rule with him a thousand years. All that, all this time we've been laboring, we're going to have a, a thousand year of rest. And so this is what this is pertaining to. That's why I told you that the scriptures 
are written in context. If you understand the context, then you will understand what it's talking about and who it's talking to. It's talking about the 12 tribes of Israel and to the 12 tribes of Israel. It's not talking about everyone and everybody else. Because when we're in the kingdom of heaven, everybody else that's not Israel is going to be our servant. And if they're poor, some of them are poor, then they, they'll be able to eat, eat the crops because we're going to let the land rest. And so those people that are not Israel, they're going to be our servants. That's what everybody else is going to be. That, that's not Israel. But Israel is going to be at rest <laughs> for, set, for a, a thousand years. We're going to rule and reign with the Most High. That's what's going to happen. Verse 12, six days you are to do your work. And on the seventh day you rest in order that your ox and your donkey might rest. And the son of your female servant and the sojourner be refreshed. And so what the Most High is saying is this is what's going to happen when we enter into the promised land. Right now we're in, in, in the wilderness during this time. But once we enter into the promised land that he promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we're going to work six days and on the seventh day we're going to rest. And he said so that your ox and your donkey can rest and your servants, your female servants of the sojourner, people that are sojourning with you. And so, like I said, everything that he's saying then also pertains to when, when the Howard Shah comes back. We're going to be at a time of rest. Right now, we're still working. This is the, we're in the 6,000 years, <laughs> coming into the 7,000 year where the turn, return of the Most High is imminent. It's pending. That's why you see everything that's happening in the earth today. Everything that's happening, you got to understand this, it's happening for a reason and for a purpose. Yahweh Shai, he sees everything, he knows everything, he knows what's going on. And so we shouldn't really be concerned about it. The only thing we should be concerned about is obeying this law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh, keeping his words, his, 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 his commandments, and loving one another. That's what we need to be concerned about in doing the work, spreading the gospel of the kingdom. All the stuff that's going to happen is going to happen. And we don't really have to worry about it. It's going to happen. We just need to trust in the Most High. But everything that's happening, all the situations and stuff that you see going on with the uh, wars or whatever they want to call them, <laughs> the pandemics, whatever they want to call them, what, all this stuff that's happening, everything has to happen because everything is coming to an end. There's an end state. There's an a expiration date. <laughs> And it's pushing toward that expiration date. People don't understand it. But the scriptures have been talking about it forever. Just like Yahweh Shah said. The same way it was in days of Noah. Same way it's going to be when the son of man returns. Same day, way it was during the, uh, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. It's the same way it's going to be when the son of man returns. Everything has an end state. This world, this, this time period has an end state. And we're, 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 we're headed toward that end state right now. <laughs> we're getting closer and closer day by day. And so that's why we got to be focused on obeying the scriptures and keeping the commandments. Because everything that's happening has to happen. We just have to know that, okay, that means Yahweh Shah is soon to come. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 13. And in all that I have said to you, take heed. He's telling us, everything that I've said to you, take heed, pay attention, do what I say. Don't go to the left, right, do exactly what I said when I said to do it. And make no mention of the name of other mighty ones and let it not be heard from your mouth. Don't be root saying you, you laying down or, or worshiping before any other idols or, 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 or other gods. The only God for Israel is, is Yahweh of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and, and his son, Yahweh Shai, the Savior of the 12 tribes of Israel. You got to understand that the scriptures have been manipulated. The names have been manipulated in the scriptures, and it's done for a reason and for a purpose. The Most High already knows that, and he understands that, and he knew it was going to happen. But that's why he's waking us up to the truth. 
And so what happened, they tried to manipulate the scriptures, but man, they, they changed the name, but they didn't change the context. The context, the way the scriptures is written, is written in code for the chosen people. And so that's why a lot of people don't understand the scripture. They read it, but they don't understand what they're reading. Because it's written for the chosen people to the chosen people. And the Most High have to give us understanding, wisdom, and knowledge. And he gives that understanding to his people. The, the, the scriptures are accessible to everybody in the world. But that doesn't mean it's written to everybody. It had to be accessible because it had to come to us. The Most High had to get the word out because the word has to follow us wherever we are. We're in our captivity. So he had to make sure that this word follow us into our captivity. So he had to allow for it to be written, interpreted, uh, translated, everything. But the context remained. And so that's what people don't understand. The context, they don't understand the context. It's still to the chosen people. <laughs> and so, yeah, uh, you know, names have been changed, but... The Yahweh is Yahweh of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I'm saying this for a reason and for a purpose so that you can understand. You have to keep Yahweh in context. Why? Because people take him out of context. They say, oh, God is the God of everybody. He's the God of humanity. He loves everybody. See, that's a lie. And, and they're taking it from the scriptures, and that's what they're, they're, they think they're right. But they're taking the scriptures out of context. He plainly said that. He's God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahweh of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's who he is. So you're trying to say, oh, he's the God of everybody. Then you're lying. You're taking the scriptures out of context. And Yahweh shot Jesus. He is the Savior of Israel. The scripture says he come to save his people from their sin. And so when you read God so loved the world, people are like, oh, he's talking about everybody. He loves everybody. <laughs> He's still talking about his chosen people. They don't understand the context. So that's why you have to keep the scriptures in context. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 14. Three times in the year you are to celebrate a festival to me. All right. This is important. Take, he said, take heed. <laughs> Pay attention. And I know you never heard it. And some of you hearing it for the first time. Because a lot of y'all don't read the scriptures. You need to start reading the scriptures. <laughs> Three times a year, you're to celebrate a festival to me. What is he saying? Three times a year, celebrate a festival to me. Who's me? Me is Yahweh Shah, Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's who he's talking about. He's talking to the 12 tribes of Israel. Three times a year, we need to celebrate. We need to come before the Most High and give him a, a glory and praise and worship him. That's what this cele it's a celebration. It's a worship and praise service. That's what it's about. He said festival. Three times a year, he want us to set aside because these are important. It's season. And it's easy to remember because it goes in line with what we call winter, spring, summer, and fall. And so the three times really is the springtime, the summertime, and the fall time. When you see these season, seasons happen, these are the three times that the Most High is referring to. This is what he's talking about. You got to understand exactly what I'm saying because right now we're at the beginning of what we call springtime. And we're at the beginning of the first time of celebration, which is the Passover in the uh Seven-day uh, celebration feast of unleavened bread. And so this is the first time that we're supposed to appear before the Most High, keeping the Passover and the feast of unleavened bread, worshiping the Most High for bringing us out of the land of Egypt. That's why I said keep the Sabbath to remember the Passover. And so the Passover is when the Most High delivered us out of the land of Egypt. And he's going to deliver us out of this captivity as well when he returns. But that's why he wants us to keep three times a year. This is what he's saying. So the first time is coming up is now, especially next. Some people are celebrating it this weekend. Some people celebrating it next weekend. I will be celebrating it next weekend along with you if you want to. And when we go into the word. But what is the next weekend will be celebrating the Passover. The next Friday, 
from actually from sundown on Thursday to sundown on Friday of next week. So the 14th and the 15th of next week is the time for the Passover. And during the Passover, we're to eat lamb. That's what we're going to eat. And the scripture said we're supposed to be eating it standing up <laughs> with our sandals on and our uh, rod in our hand. And we're supposed to be like we're ready to go because he had to deliver us out of Egypt in a hairy. <laughs> because the deaf angel was coming through killing all the firstborn in Egypt. And he was passing over the 12 tribes of Israel. And so when you eat the Passover, it's just for one night, one day. It's between the, the time of the, uh, the evening of Thursday, the 14th, and, and the sunset, the third, uh, Friday, the, the, the 15th. So from sunset to sunset, that's a day. <laughs> and so you, when you eat that lamb, just, just enough for that one day. Don't cook enough for two or three or four days. Just one day and eat it all. That's it. Now, those are the commandments of the Most High. And then that seven-day feast of celebration and worship unto the Lord, uh, we're, we're supposed to uh, not work at all. So that Friday, you should just take that day off work because it's a day of rest. That's the day that we're supposed to present ourselves before the Most High and, and, and worship Him. And so it's like a day to, to just honor Him and, and, and give Him praise, glory, and honor. And then that next seven days, we're to eat unleavened bread with bitter herbs <laughs> for seven days. And then on that last day, the seventh day of the seven, uh, uh, of unleavened bread, then we're to uh, celebrate and worship the Most High on that last day. But for that, those seven days, we're to eat unleavened bread. Now, that's the main thing, but if you want to mix something with it, other than it can't be leavened. It has to be unleavened bread, and I believe for the most part, it's, it's a, a vegetarian, like fast. That's all you're eating is, is, is unleavened bread and, and uh, vegetarian, no meat. So that's doing this next week. So I'm bringing that out for a reason and for a purpose. Because he said three times in the year, you're to celebrate a festival to me. So if you're hearing this next week, next 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 Friday, it's, it's Passover. <laughs> and then after that is, is the, uh, seven, uh, the unleavened bread, piece of unleavened bread for seven days. So you got that? All right. Tell your, your neighbors, your family, and friends to celebrate it with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 15. Guard the festival of Mazat. That's the Passover. The unleavened bread. Seven days you are to eat unleavened bread as I commanded you at the time appointed in the new moon of Abib. This is the, the, the new moon of Abib, April, right now. For, if, for in it you came out of Mizraim. And do not appear before me empty-handed. <laughs> and so this is what the Most High is saying, saying, and this is what he's mean. Don't appear before him empty-handed. This is for next Friday. Keep the Passover. Worship the Most High. Don't appear before him empty-handed. Do exactly what he said to do. Because you're going to be held accountable. Now, I know a lot of y'all probably never heard it, and, and they don't tell you this. In your 501c3 corporation, they don't teach you about this. They don't teach you who Israel is. And see, they'll talk about Israel, but they won't say who Israel is. You ask them, who's Israel? They're probably going to tell you, oh, the people over in the land, they're the chosen people. The people over there called Israel, Jewish, Jews, people. They're not Israel. All of Israel is scattered. And so that's why they don't tell you. Maybe they're ignorant and don't know. But now... If they were listening to this, they don't have an excuse. <laughs> so if you're Israel, this is what we're supposed to be doing. All the 12 tribes of Israel, next Friday, keep the Passover, the 15th of April. All right? It's telling you, 2315. <laughs> the 15th of April, keep the Passover. 
Don't appear before the Most High empty-handed. Verse 16, and the festival of the harvest, the first fruits of your labor, your labors which you have sown in the field, and the festival of in gathering at the on, outgoing of the year, when you have gathered in the fruits of your labors from the field. So these are the next two times that we're supposed to appear before the Most High. So the festival of the harvest, I believe it's fall time. It's either fall, it has to be fall, the beginning of fall, or what we call fall. So that's like in uh, September or August. I have to verify that. <laughs> so that's the next festival that we're supposed to appear before the Most High. And what he's saying, the first fruits of your labor. And that's just, again, it's about worship. It's an altar. An altar is where you worship the Most High. You can fall on your knees anywhere. Wherever you fall on your knees and worship before the Most High, that's your altar. And you worship Him. Give praise, glory, and honor for, for, for your income, whatever that is. Because a lot of us are not bring, we don't have food like the crops from the field. So we have to give praise, glory, and honor for the blessing that we use to get the, the food. <laughs> and so it's not like it was then. So the Most High understands that. So I have to explain it to you so you can understand. To give glory and honor for, for your labors. What, what He's blessed you with so that you can feed yourself. Which you have sown in the field. And then the feast. Festival of the end gathering and the outgoing of the year when you have gathered in the fruit of your labors from the field. So the end of the year is the beginning of the fall, the beginning of winter. So I have to verify the, these two festivals. Is it is it summer and fall or is it fall and winter? It's one of the two. But I, I, I'll come back and, and confirm what those days are. But those are the two Three times that we're supposed to appear before the Most High and worship Him and give glory and honor before Him. They're feast days, festival days, but that means worship. Worship the Most High for His blessings that He's bestowed upon us. Verse 17, three times in the year, all your males are to appear before the Master, Yahweh. And so this also pertains to all the men of the 12 tribes of Israel. It's vitally important. This is what the Most High commands us to do. Again, I'm telling you this, and the, the way it was then is still the same way it is now. People say, oh, you don't have, yes, you do. <laughs> All the men of Israel have to appear before the Most High, Yahweh, our master. That's what he said three times a year during this festival. We are to dedicate our lives, everything that we have on and possess unto the Most High. It's a time of dedication to the Most High. All the men are supposed to do this. He said, three times in the year, all your males are to appear before the Master, Yahweh. Verse 18, do not slaughter the blood of my slaughtering with leavened bread, and the fat of my festival shall not remain until morning. So again, he's telling us about the Passover that's coming up that they were supposed to keep also. Do not slaughter the blood of my slaughtering. When talking about the lamb that he used to worship Yahweh, he said, don't eat it with leavened bread. <laughs> you have to eat it with unleavened bread. So this is on the night of the Passover. Eat it with leavened bread. And he said, the fat of the festival shall not remain until the morning. Don't. Once we eat it that night, that's it for the... Uh, the lamb. Don't don't eat the lamb after the Passover. Just on the Passover, which is next Friday. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 19. Bring the first fruits of your land into the house of Yahweh, your Elohim, and do not cook a young goat in his mother's milk. All right. And so now he's talking about the other festival, the first fruit festival. And what that is, it's the income. Your labor, when the Most High blesses your income, you get a raise. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Those are the first fruit. And see, so he said, during this time, during this time of the year, uh, it's either the beginning of summer or, or the beginning of 
of a, a fall. I got to confirm that because I'm not a farmer and I haven't been keeping up. I haven't been keeping these days either. So I'm learning as, as I'm teaching you. <laughs> and so we have to learn together. But he want us to present what we, all the blessings that we get come from the Most High. And he wants us to acknowledge him during this time. That's what he's saying. Into the house of your Howard, your Elohim. And that's when you fall before him and you worship him. You give him praise, glory, and honor. And then he says, do not cook a young goat in his mother's milk. When you're doing the Passover, he said, don't be bringing no baby goats <laughs> to keep the Passover. If, a, if it's a baby, don't bring that. Don't kill the baby goat that's still sucking the milk from his mom. That when you eat the Passover, don't do that. <laughs> He's too young. So this is what the Most High is saying when we eat lamb. But a lot of times we're not slaughtering any lamb. We're just buying it at the store. And so the Most High understands that also. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 20. See, I am sending a messenger before you to guard you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. And so he's switching gears. Again, the Most High is teaching and instructing us while we're in the wilderness because he's about to bring us into the promised land that he promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he's telling us, hey, look, I'm going to send a messenger before you to guard you. He's going to bring you on your way into the promised land that I've prepared for you. And so he's getting them ready, getting them prepared to enter into the promised land. But and he he's really ready to do it now. He's telling us. But the problem, <laughs> all of us during that time, a lot of us didn't believe, unbelief. And so it took 40 years for him to bring us into the promised land. He was ready to bring us in right then and there. But because of unbelief, no one obeyed the scriptures. It took 40 years, and all those that didn't, that was un, an unbelief, he had to wait till they die off. 40 years. He had a whole generation of people to die off before he could bring us into the promised land. And so now that's why he's preparing us now. He's waking us up. A lot of us still don't want to believe who we are. Tell him, oh, you know what? We, You Israel, I wear a scarf. <laughs> it, it's part of our Hebraic heritage <laughs> and culture and so sometimes you see me wearing those scarf that's what i wear when i'm at work and, and people look at me other people mostly <laughs> our the people that we're in the land of our captivity that that's over us the ruling class people they understand they like oh he 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 know who he is <laughs> and they respect that and they acknowledge it <laughs> But my own people, Hebrew Israelite, they look like us. They, they look at me like, are you cold? <laughs> like, why are you wearing the scarf, man? They don't have a clue. Because when they brought us in captivity, they took away our culture, our heritage, everything. And so we don't have a culture. We don't have a, 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 a heritage. They took all that away. And so they gave us a new culture, a new heritage. New names. <laughs> and so now we go by whatever they call us. And so for us to acknowledge who we are as Hebrew Israelite, people say, what do you mean we're Hebrew Israelite? <laughs> That's what the scripture says. That's who we are. Abraham was a Hebrew. We're the seed of Abraham. So that means we're all Hebrew. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. We're all the seed of Jacob whose name was changed to Israel, so we're Israelites. So that means we're Hebrew Israelites. That's who we are. So I'm explaining it to you so you can understand. That's why we're Hebrew Israelites. And it's 12 tribes. And But we're from the tribe of Judah. The southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin were called Jews, and we're scattered the further. Yahweh Shai Jesus said that you're going to be scattered. You're going to be Followed by the edge of the sword and led away captive into all nations. That's what happened to us. When Jerusalem fell, we, we, was, we scattered 
and we fled into the parts of the continent of Africa and other places. But then we were brought into captivity here in America and other places all over the earth. And so he said that you're going to be led away captive into all nations. And so all of the 12 tribes of Israel are scattered. And the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin is scattered the further, furthest into all nations. He said, until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. We're in the times of the Gentiles, and the times of the Gentiles are not fulfilled yet. The Gentiles are the ruling class people in the earth today. We're in the land of our captivity. They had, they're holding us captive. And we're still in the land of our captivity. We're not really free. And we won't be free until Yahweh comes to get us, to bring us out of this captivity. We're free in him, but we're not free as because we were brought into captivity. And so we're still in the land of our captivity. That's why I'm saying we're really not free. And so they said they freed us from slavery, but they used... They had an exception that if you commit a crime, oh, you're going back into slavery. <laughs> That's the exception. So until we are free, none of us are free. And if all the people that are in, incarcerated are locked up. They're in slavery. So that means we're all still in slavery. And so... That's why we would never receive reparations. I want you to listen carefully to what I'm saying. They can't give reparations to someone that's still in slavery, someone that's still, they consider a slave. They can't. That's why they can't give us reparations. Because <laughs> we're still in slavery. So we would never receive that. And the Most High don't want us to receive that anyway. Because what they're going to try to do, and... If they try to do it, this is what they're going to try to do it with. They're going to try to do it with the abomination of desolation. And he said, like, what's that? And it's the mark of the beast. You say, okay, what's that? So that they're going to try to do this implant thing. And that's what they're going to try to do, especially for us. Oh, all y'all, we're going to give y'all reparations, but it's going to be in the form of this implant. So you got to get this implant. That's the abomination of desolation. That's changing our who we are. The Most High already told us, don't receive that. The scripture said you won't be able to buy or sell. <laughs> and so uh, that's what they're going to do. If they want to give us reparation, that's what it's going to be in the form of. The abomination of desolation, the mark of the beast. And you won't be able to buy or sell unless you receive it. But the Most High is warning us not to receive that. If you receive the abomination of desolation, the mark of the beast, the so-called reparation, you're marking yourself for death, to be, to be destroyed. You're going to be cast into the lake of fire. You're like, well, how are we going to live? That's why you got to learn to trust in the Most High. <laughs> Oh, uh, so I know this is like, what? What are you talking about? Just take heed and listen to what I'm saying. The Most High said he's going to send a messenger to guard us in the way to bring us to the place that he's prepared for us. Don't worry about a thing. He's got us in his hand. <laughs> That's what he's telling us. He's waking us up. Look, so everything is lining up. I couldn't even plan this any better. <laughs> The same way he's telling them then, he's telling us now. He's going to send a messenger. And he's going to bring us out of the land of our captivity to bring us into the land that he's prepared for us, the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 21. Be on guard before him and obey his voice. Do not rebel against him, for he is not going to pardon your transgression, for my name is in him. So this angel, he ain't going to have no mercy. You better obey because this is not the time of mercy. This is the time of vengeance. And you're either going to do what he say or you're going to be destroyed. And so this is why the Most High is preparing us right now. <laughs> he was preparing us then, but he had to wait 40 years because they were, we wasn't ready. He had to, because he wants us to have faith. The scripture says, Yahweh Shah said, when he returned, will he find faith? We got to believe the scriptures. Israel, and not only believe, we got to do what the scripture says. Hallelujah. This angel ain't going to be playing. He said, don't rebel against him when he show up. This angel is Yahweh Shai, if you didn't know. 
Jesus. And when he comes back, he ain't going to be playing. He ain't coming like a lamb. He's coming like a lion. He said, my name, my name is in him. Yahweh Shai, Jesus, the son of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 22. But if you diligently obey his voice and shall do all that I speak, then I shall be an enemy to your enemies and a distresser to those who distress you. So don't worry about a thing. The Most High got our back. It's going to be payback. <laughs> he said if we diligently obey his voice when he comes, oh, he got us. Don't worry about these reparation things. Ain't, don't worry about that. <laughs> he said, I'm going to be an enemy to your enemies. Oh, they're going to try to starve you? Don't worry about that. I'm going to feed you. You'll be all right. I'm going to be a distresser to those that distress you. They want to cause you uncomfort and, and, and distress. And you're going to wonder and worry about, well, how am I going to eat? Don't worry about that. <laughs> you can't solve your own problems anyway. That's why he's sending the messenger. Hallelujah. Amen. So don't receive those reparations. Don't receive the mark of the beast. Don't receive the abomination of desolation. Verse 23. For my messenger shall go before you and shall bring you into the Amorites and the Hittites and the Pazarites and the Kenites and the Hewites and the Jebusites. And I shall cut them off. Hallelujah. And so that's why you know and can understand that the scriptures are only written to the chosen people. You can see clearly it's not written to the Amorites and the Hittites and the Pedrites and the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Jebusites. He's going to cut them off. In the same way he's going to cut them off, he's going to cut off everybody else that's not Israel when he returns. That's it. He said the messenger shall come before you and shall bring you all these people that taking over our land, oh, he's going to kick them out. The whole earth belongs to us, everywhere, all the earth. <laughs> Everything belongs to us. He said, I'm going to cut them off. They can either be a servant or they're going to be cast into the lake of fire. Take your pick. <laughs> and so this is what the Most High is going to do. The same way he's talking then, then he's talking right now the same thing. And so you have to understand what's going on. Verse 24. Do not bow down to their mighty ones, nor serve them, nor do according to their works. But with all fail, with, but without, without fail, overthrow them, and without fail, break down their pillars, their altars. And so this is what the Most High is saying to do. When he, when he comes back, when, we, when he brought it, bring us in the promised land, this is what he wants us to do. Then and now. He said, be, do not bow down to their mighty ones, to their, their idols. We ain't got time for that. Knock them down, destroy everything. <laughs> all what they serve in, all these statues, whatever, wherever, knock them down. Nor serve them, nor accord, do according to their works. But without fail, overthrow them. Without fail, break down their pillars, their altars. And so this is what's going to happen. When he brought us into the promised land then, we, we had to take the land. We had to, whatever we, he took us, we, we had to take the land. All the land that he gave to us, we had to take. <laughs> so when Yahweh Shai comes back, the same thing has to happen. We got to take the land. Everything, every way he brings us, we got to take the land. And we're not... Don't be like, oh, no, you got to take the land if you're Israel. And so that's why he's raising up an army, the 144,000. <laughs> that's going to be ready to war and, and, and fight. <laughs> oh, this is deep. This is deeper than I can even imagine. But this is the most high. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 25. And you shall serve your Howard, your Elohim, and he shall bless your bread and your water and shall remove sickness from you, from your midst. Hallelujah. So the Most High is dealing with all the issues. He, he is. He's like, issues? What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, so like I said, he during this time, he was ready to bring us into the promised land, but because of unbelief, it took 40 years. 
but he was preparing them. And so he still prepared, he, he prepared them to bring them in, and they, they did possess the land. But now all the 12 tribes of Israel, we're scattered again right now. <clears throat> we're in the land of our captivity. <clears throat> and that's how it's always been. We've just been stubborn, stiff-necked, hard-hearted, disobedient. We're still the same way today. And so the Most High is getting ready to come back. And a lot of us are still stiff-necked, hard-hearted, disobedient, and stiff-necked. We don't believe the scriptures. <laughs> and so we're going to get left out of the kingdom. Only those that are ready are going to go into the kingdom and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so he's saying, I'm going to bless your bread and your water. You ain't got to worry about taking this mark of the beast. Because these are going to be some trying times. The scripture talks about it. <laughs> oh, it's going to be, they call it the, the, the time of tribulation. And so we, he's going to bring us through this. But we're going to break, go through it. But he said, don't worry about your bread and water. This mark of the beast and this abomination of death. You don't have to worry about it. Don't take that. That's not for you. If you take that, you steal your faith. And you're not going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. You're going to be cast into the lake of fire. I'm warning you. I'm telling you. Come out of her, my people. And so he said, I'm going to take care of you. You don't have to worry about that. So they're going to make this reparation thing sound so good. Don't take it. I'm telling you, don't take it. <laughs> and I shall remove sickness from your midst. You ain't going to get sick. I ain't going to let you that happen. I'm going to take care of you. You ain't got to take their, their, their mark. That's the mark of death if you take that. Verse 26. None shall miscarry or be bearing in your land. I shall fill the number of your days. So the Most High is letting us know, look, when I bring you into the promised land, it's going to be great. You ain't got to worry about nothing. You ain't going to have no more miscarriage or being bearing in the land. You're going to still be able to produce. You're going to still live long. <laughs> Hallelujah. He was talking to them about when he brought them into the promised land then, but it pertains to us right now. That when we, he bring us into the promised land, the kingdom of heaven, that's going to be our time of rest. He's gonna, we ain't going to have to toil day and night and every day like we're doing right now. <laughs> sun up to sun down and almost every day and not even taking a day off. And then barely making it, barely scraping, getting by. You, young, some of y'all, some of us, we, we, we kind of bless. But a lot of us, we're not. And you need to understand that. We're still living from paycheck to paycheck, barely making ends meet. Everybody is not where everybody is. It's, it's, it's uneven. And so that's why we got to have faith. We got to obey the scriptures and do what the Most High says to do. A lot of Israel is still in abstract poverty everywhere, even in this country and all around the earth. That's where the children of Israel is. That's who we are. We're the poorest people in the earth. Hallelujah. But the Most High, He sees that. He knows that. He cares about us. He's going to fix that. Hallelujah. Verse 27. I shall send my fear before you and cause confusion among all the people to whom you come. And make all your enemies turn their backs to you. Hallelujah. Amen. This is awesome. This is awesome. So when the Most High comes... Oh, he's going to he's gonna wreak havoc. <laughs> he's he's going to cause confusion. He, he, they're going to be afraid of us. Oh, they're going to just back up out of the way. And that's what's going to happen when he comes back. Oh, the, the party is over. <laughs> the fat lady is saying it, it's all over because we're taking back everything. And so a lot of our enemies, they already know this. And so that's why I was telling you when I wear these scarves to work because I'm, I'm, I'm living in our heritage, our culture was taken away from us. They understand that. And so they say, oh, he, he knows who he is. <laughs> and so they respect that. They respect me. And he said, I'm going to make your enemies turn their back. And some of them just look down. They don't even look up. And so that's what's going to happen when he comes back. All our enemies... They, they know. They either get on our side or they're going to be destroyed. That's what's going to happen. Verse 28. And I shall send hornets before you, which shall drive out the Hewites and the Canaanites and the Hittites 
from before you. All the people that's occupying our land got to go. The Jephet Gentiles, the Edomites, the uh, Khazarians, Jephet Gentiles, all of them got to go. They got to get out of our land. That is a lot larger than when, when what they're calling it. And they've taken it by fraud and deceit. And so even that, even the whole earth belongs to us. The Yahweh Shah is coming back to rule the whole earth. Hallelujah. Verse 29. And I shall, I shall not drive them out from before you in one year, lest the land become a waste and the beasts of the field become too numerous for you. And so the Most High is saying even to them then and to us now, when he comes back, it's going to be a work to do. It's not going to be like a one-day thing and everything going to be set in order. It's going to be some time. But <laughs> but that's how it's going to be. But it's going to be glorious for us because if we're in faith, when the Most High returns, oh, it's going to be glorious. But uh, if you don't believe, oh, it's going to be hell to pay. Because you're in unbelief. That's why it's so important to believe the scriptures, obey the scriptures, and do what the scripture says to do. And so it's, still, it's going to be a lot of work. But it's going to be glorious for us because it's our time of victory, being delivered from, from our captivity. Verse 30, little by little I shall drive them out from before you until you have increased and you inherit the land. Hallelujah. <laughs> This is all prophecy. It's for them then and now. And so he's preparing them, us, when we were in, in, in the wilderness then, to go into the promised land. And now he's preparing us again to go into the kingdom of heaven, the promised land, when he comes back. And he's saying the same thing is going to happen again. We're going to be going in little by little. He's not going to give everything to us all at once. Because in the earth, we're, we're, we're the sand of the sea. But a lot of us, or in unbelief. So we're gonna, he's going to have to start over with, with, with Israel to increase our numbers. Verse 31. And I shall, shall set your border from the sea of the Red Sea to the sea of the Philistines and from the wilderness to the river. And I shall give the inhabitants of the land into your hand and you shall drive them out before you. Hallelujah. So the world knows this. Our enemies knows this. Believe me. They've, they've done scenarios. They want to try to... They can't win. Whatever scenario they come up with. <laughs> and so they know who we are. But the thing about it is... The only way they get victory... Because they're the enemy. They're part of the devil's camp. Is to keep us ignorant about who we are. That's why it's so important... To understand who we are. If we're ignorant, then we're going to be destroyed. The scripture said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So if you don't obey and believe the scripture, you will be destroyed. So it's imperative that you believe these scriptures and do what it says to do. And the Most High is telling that this is what he's going to do when he returns. I'm going to set borders from the Sea of the Red Sea to the Sea of the Philistines. And from the wilderness to the river, I shall give the inhabitants of the land into your hand. All of They're going to be our servants, all of them. And they already know this. <laughs> and you shall drive them out before you. They're either going to be our servants or they're going to be destroyed. Take your pick. Verse 32. Do not make a covenant with them nor with their mighty ones. Don't be telling them, oh, it's going to be okay. No, it's not going to be okay. Bow down. That's what's going to happen. You're going to do what I say. That's it. It ain't no, we're going to just take care. No, we're not taking care of you. Did you take care of us? You're going to take care of us in our being, we're going to, you're going to rule, we're going to rule over you and you're going to be our servant. That's what's going to happen. We've served you. Now you're going to serve us. And so this is what's getting ready to happen. That's why he's not the God of everybody. He's not the God of humanity. He ain't coming to save everybody. He's coming to save his people from their sin. He's not coming for everybody. I hope you understand this now. I hope it's more clear to you now. Verse 33. 
Let them not dwell in your land, lest they make you sin against me when you serve their mighty ones, when it comes becomes a snare to you. So we're going to have to kill and destroy all our enemies. These, this is the time that we get to pay back and just take them out. We have to. we commanded to do this. And, and so that's why he's raising us up. To, to get us ready to do this because love, God is love. Yeah, he's love, but he's going to kill the enemy. <laughs> he love us. He, we're his people. And so this is why you got to keep the scriptures in context because the most high doesn't play. He ain't playing with us and he ain't playing with the rest of the world. He's going to deal with them. And, he, and if we don't act right, he's going to deal with us. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Hallelujah. See you next time. Shalom.